Pat, 21 brought a ton of strain on the supply chain and nothing uh, was more touted as a problem for uh, the supply chain than the chip shortage. Vehicles, PCs, servers, uh, gaming consoles, refrigerators, ovens, basically you name it, you could not get it. And that was because we had a massive problem with our ch chip manufacturing. Um, so over the course of the year, the, uh, you know, the semiconductor industry, the CEOs of many of our, our, our clients, customers, um, policymakers had all come together to basically uh, try to put a bill forward. And Pat, as much as it seemed obvious for the sake of national defense, uh, for the supply chain resiliency, for technology leadership, there was a period of time where it really didn't look certain that uh, we were going to get this bill passed. And so the Chips and Sciences Act, over $50 billion, uh, plus another couple hundred billion potentially for other innovation R&D. We talk a lot about lack of the research part of research and development to help the United States build a greater resiliency um, in the semiconductor space finally passed. Now, this was the great news. I'm going to be a little bit of a Debbie Downer on my best of and just say, sadly, the passage was really the beginning, not the end. And there's so much work left to be done. Um, I expect Intel to step up in a big way to add to the manufacturing capacity. But that, uh, of course, Intel has had a tough couple of years and the market is not as bullish on Intel as it might want to be. Um, you know, we see TSM, we see Samsung, we see a number of fabulous all with hands out looking for money. Um, you know, we've got the likes of IBM, Global Foundries. But in the end, the passage is the beginning. It was a great start. I'm very excited. We need to make more chips here and more chips outside of Asia. What's going on in Taiwan and China is scary. You should be afraid of what's going on. Don't be distracted by Russia and Ukraine. <laughs> the real scariest uh, conflict in our world right now is in China. But the passage of the act is the beginning. We're two to three years away from really seeing a benefit. And we do want to see the money go to companies that will keep it here domestically and in safe parts of the world. And that will add real resiliency to both leading and lagging edge. Because a lot of our continued delays are actually 14 nanometer and higher. And we really haven't solved that problem yet at scale. Pat, what's your best announcement for 2020? Yeah, so first off, um, we did, didn't collaborate on this going in. So I didn't know what you were going to pick until... I don't know, a few hours <laughs> ago. And and that and that was a and that was a really good one. I almost wish I would have chosen it, but uh you know me, I'm a product person, so I think I thought product announcement, right? Like what products were Yeah, announced. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I was cheating. I came up with something that was easy, fun, and broad. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's good. And 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 for a second I thought you were gonna pick like TSMC's disaster Arizona. Uh, announcement event that they did out there that got hijacked by uh, by uh, POTUS uh, for his union union talk. But uh, <laughs> anyways, no, I, I chose a different one. And and the way that I, uh, you know, I always say one of the things I enjoy most about being an industry analyst is I could do what I really enjoyed a lot and a lot more when I was in I was in the business and that's participate and be part of a bunch of announcements. And that can either be part of an advisory role up front or a market education role uh, outbound in, in outside voice. And I really liked IBM, IBM's quantum roadmap at, at Think. And maybe we'll, well, wait a second, Pat, that's like, you know, not reality or, or blah, blah, blah. But uh, best announcement to me, it, it uncovers things that I was always wondering about the company or about the uh, the technology. So IBM has chosen a, a technology uh, on quantum that people are like, hey, how do I scale this thing? That's a challenge. And B, how do I increase the uh, the quality of, of, of the qubits? And quite frankly, they, they answered both of those questions. It was just a kind of an aha moment, right? They've talked about the research on increasing the the quality uh, of, of of the qubits, which you know, um, I, I think has been a a a challenge uh, for IBM, particularly for scaling. Because if you don't have the quality of the qubits, then you have to create a bajillion more uh, qubits to get there. And the other thing it answered uh, for me was was on on scalability, and that's 
not only scalability inside of the, I don't know if you want to call it a trap uh, or, or something like that, but, but it's more of the chip. So whether it was, you know, Flamingo, Kookaburra, uh, or, or something uh, like that, Heron and, and Crossbill, they showed not only how you could scale on, on a smaller version, I'll call it the semiconductor version, but also connecting multiple systems uh, together. So that's why I choose um, IBM's quantum announcement that they did at Think for my best announcement of 2022. Hey, and listen, Pat, um, bringing some real world and real life to quantum is a big deal. In 21, it felt like there was a lot of quantum bullshit. Uh Uh-oh, now we got the advisory sticker. Beep. Anyways, but there was a lot of kind of like, you know, we're going to go all, but in 22, I think as the market gets more practical, getting more practical matters. So it's a, it was a really big announcement. And so I think uh, don't undersell it because uh, quantum is going to become a very important part of our world in the next two to 35 years.